ان الحمد لله وحده الصلاه والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم all praise be to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his choicest blessings be upon the prophet muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam but unfortunately there are many muslim countries they did they, they they handed over many muslims over to them and they're languishing in different jails and prisons of the world guantanamo bay is uh, so called and uh, notorious we can say the place so this is part of the friendship is that prophet said sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam that one should not hand his brother or sister to the muslims one of the uh, ex president of pakistan so called president self styled president he was actually a dictator he was a military chief general parvez musharraf he wrote also a book in the line of fire uh, then he handed over dr afia siddiqui one of our sisters she is still languishing in the american prison and uh, she has lost her consciousness because of the terrible tortures by these so called champions of human rights and he handed her over to the americans and setting aside the hadith of the prophet sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam nor should one hand his brother or sister over to an oppressor this hadith is in sahih muslim and if one did not defend his brother then he did humiliate him one of the one of the rights which we owe towards our friends is that that if anybody is saying any wrong or passing any wrong comments about him we must defend him, whether he is present or he is absent in his presence or in his absence because we should not accept any false thing about any muslim that's what imam ibn jawzi says rahimahullah taala that if one did not defend his brother then he did humiliate him to measure how far you are a good brother or a good sister and did you defend your brother or sister ponder over the following the first point imagine that what was said against him or her was said about you in his presence therefore say what you would like him to say about you if you were in if he were in your place this is the we can say a yardstick a criterion to judge whether we truly have a good relationship with our brothers or sisters or not second thing imagine that he hears your defense your friend somebody was saying against him and you started defending him so imagine that he hears your defense therefore say what you like him to hear your praise of him should not differ whether he is present or absent because when we when we stand for the defense of a person we should not just to, just to please a person rather we must please the the creator of the person that is allah subhanahu wa taala so our defense should not just to get the praise of the people rather uh, sayyiduna uh, kaab uh, sayyiduna kaab ibn malik radhiyallahu anhu when he lagged behind from the from the expedition of tabuk we know the tabuk episode <coughs> battle of tabuk it was for the first time that prophet sallallahu taala wasallam he did not practice the tawriya tawriya was a war strategy that whenever prophet sallallahu taala wasallam was supposed to uh, just lead an expedition towards towards a specific direction he would he would inquire about the opposite direction say he was supposed to go towards the east he would inquire about the west so how are the terrains how are the plains how uh, how far is the distance so what are the climatic conditions so so that if there happened to be any spy any detective so he is misinformed so this was a war strategy but this was for the first time that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not practice tawriya sensing the 
the sensitivity of this battle, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he openly declared the destination. He said, we have to go to Tabuk. And three Sahaba, Sayyiduna Kaab ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, Sayyiduna Murara bin Rabi radiallahu anhu, and Sayyiduna Hilal ibn Umayyah radiallahu anhu. They were true, sincere Sahaba, but somehow they could not join the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if I'm not mistaken, Sayyiduna Talha radiallahu anhu, when they reached there, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inquired about, where is Kaab? One of the Sahabi, he said, now he's too much affluent, he doesn't have any time for the jihad. He doesn't have any time for the Prophet now, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has to take care of his wealth. So he, he just passed it, some, we can say, negative comments about Sayyidina Kaab radiallahu anhu. And Sayyidina Talha radiallahu anhu, he defended, he said, Wallahi, I don't know anything about him except the good. He's not such a kind of person. That dunya can, dunya can prevent him, stop him from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was knowing the nature of Sayyiduna Kaab radiallahu anhu. So he defended Kaab in his absence. But when Sayyiduna Kaab knew about it, that Sayyiduna Talha radiallahu anhu, he, he defended him. Definitely, he developed more love for him. So the mutual bond was more strengthened. So one must defend. However, this defense should be only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, a person will become a and a hypocrite. This will develop a nifaq in the heart. If we just okay, I defend it on your on, on, on your behalf. To, to to just to please a person. And there was no intention that what Prophet Sallallahu has commanded us. So when we practice this, when we defend our brothers or sisters, whether in presence or in, in their presence or in their absence, the intention should not just to please the person, rather we are pleasing our Allah. Why? Because we practice the command of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you should also exert utmost efforts to impart knowledge to your brother. Man's need for knowledge is not less important than his need for money. Very few people understand this thing. Most of us understand the importance of the money. We understand the importance of the wealth. Because uh, its benefits are quite observable in this world. But the need for knowledge is not only what Ibn Jawzi says, it's not less important than his need for money. Rather, فَلَيْسَ حَاجَةُ أَخِيكَ إِلَى الْعِلْمِ بِأَقَلُّ مِنْ حَاجَتِهِ إِلَى الْمَالِ but the, our need for knowledge is tremendously important. It's more important than our need for our need for the wealth. Because if we don't have too much wealth in dunya, so we may face the hardships of life. We may have to live an austere and a life of a pauper. But still we can live, we can survive on the planet. And there are, just yesterday I was just uh, uh, trying to search out the, the economic disparity chart in 2021, I found out that there are only 2,755 billionaires in the world. But there is exception of the Saudi billionaires uh, because, of the, because of the stringent operations which were carried out by the Mohammed bin Salman. Leaving that aside, the Forbes listed that there are 2,755 billionaires in the world and they possess double the wealth of the 6.9 billion people on the planet. So it means that majority of the people, they are living in a state of poverty. So in this, this dunya, whether a person is rich or poor, the sun rises in the morning and sets in the evening. As it takes away the, the day from the life of a poor, so it takes away the day in a, the from the life of the rich. So if a person happened to be poor on the planet, still he can survive. But as far as the Akhra is concerned, the knowledge which we need, which we require to secure our salvation in the Akhra, that cannot be achieved by wishful thinking. 
that needs the knowledge proper knowledge sound knowledge and then there is also test in the knowledge in seeking knowledge there are many people who mislead the people many the, the so called champions of knowledge but they mislead the people so our need for knowledge is not less than then is not less than our need for need for the wealth so the true friendship is that if when friend sees that there's a lack of knowledge on the part of my friend he must impart the knowledge and that's tremendously important specifically in our modern day era when the level of our knowledge of deen is is all known to us at how many people attend the sessions of knowledge and if we see the 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 population of a particular region that how many people make sincere efforts to acquire the knowledge we can see in our friendship how many friends are and if we find we are in a friendship where all friends are eager eager enough to to know about the deen then it's a, another blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a person that he is surrounded by such a friendship that have the 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 ardent desire to acquire the knowledge of the knowledge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but most of most of the friendships we find out that they are all friends of dunya not friends of deen therefore it is immensely important that if any of the friends is blessed with the knowledge he or she has the responsibility to impart this with his friend thus he should advise him secretly if he come across with any with any fault with any flaw with any problem we should not humiliate our friends in front of everyone rather we should advise our friends secretly therefore whenever you find an error error you should reform both kindly and secretly kindness and secrecy has to be observed if he insists he should you should boycott him but this boycott should not exceed the three days but if there arise a need to boycott even for more days that's also permissible but the reason should be only uh, that uh, the the that the person doesn't doesn't want to be reformed or doesn't accept any change but if you find that a person accepts a change though it is so slow because uh, the guidance comes from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some people are fortunate enough that it takes just a minute just a moment for them to get changed but for many a people it takes a long period of time but if the change happens if we can if we can find a change though not significant though not visible change but we find that yes a person is now getting changed so it means that our efforts have bore the fruits our our efforts have borne the fruits so one should uh, enhance his efforts or her, her efforts make more efforts but two things are important kindly and secretly one should not make the uh, secrets of brother or sisters public that is tremendously forbidden that is strictly forbidden that we expose the secrets of others before the before the people we, we make it public as it is it is the amana and amana al majalis bil amana our sessions and councils are also amana then fifth thing you should make dua for your brother in his lifetime and after his demise the prophet peace and blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon him said there is no believing servant who supplicates for his brother behind his back in his absence that the angels do not say the same be for you too reported by muslim so this is uh, the another thing that ad dua lil akh fi hayatihi wa ba'da mautihi so prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam da'wat al mar'i al muslim li akhihi bi dhahri al ghayb mustajabat that the supplication of the muslim brother in absence of his brother is accepted mustajaba is all accepted in the ra'sihi malak so there is an angel muwakkal who has been appointed this duty kullama da'a li akhihi bi khair whenever he supplicates of good for his brother qala al malak the the angel says al muwakkal bi who is appointed for this job 
Amin wa laka bi misl. Amin. O oh Allah, may Allah accept it. Wa laka bi misl. And same be for you. Be same for you too. And Sayyidina Abu Darda radiallahu anhu. It is mentioned that كان أبو الدردة رضي الله عنه يدول خلق كثير من إخوانه يسميهم بأسمائهم. That Abu الدردة رضي الله عنه used to supplicate for for a number of people. For a number of people he used to make supplications. يسميهم بأسمائهم. He would supplicate for them by calling their names. And أحمد بن حنبل رحمه الله تعالى. Imam Ibn Jawzi says Rahimahullah Ta'ala that Ahmad ibn Hanbal Kana yad'u Kana Ahmad ibn Hanbal Rahimahullah Ta'ala Yad'u fi sahari Li sittati nafar That he would mention Six people In his pre-dawn Prayers At the time of suhoor Pre-dawn prayers He would He would supplicate For six people And This is When you make dua in his lifetime, during his lifetime. However, when he passes away, then we should also make dua for him. Imam al-Ghazali says, Rahimahullah ta'ala, not only make dua for him, rather take care of the family, if there is no one to support his family, or her family. And he says, that our aslaf, our pious predecessors, they used to take care of, uh, their brothers and sisters' families, uh, for 40 years after the demise of their friend. For 40 years they would take care of them. So after, after the death, after the demise of the friend, إِذَا دَعَ الْعَبْدُ لِأَخِيهِ الْمَيِّدِ Sayyidina Amr ibn Hurais, he narrates that إِذَا دَعَ الْعَبْدُ لِأَخِيهِ الْمَيِّدِ When a person supplicates for his brother who passed away, أَتَى بِهَا مَلَكُ مَلَكُ الْكَبْرَةِ so this supplication, this du'a, a malak takes this to the grave of, of the person. فَقَالْ يَا صَاحِبَ الْقَبَرِ الْغَرِيبِ Oh, the strange person in this cover, in this grave. هَذِي هَدِيَّةُ مِنْ أَخِينَ أخي عَلَيْكَ الشَّفِيقِ This is the gift from your beloved friend. He has, he has gifted this du'a to you. So this is uh, making du'a for our brothers and sisters. And one of the hadiths is, uh, that when we say, Oh Allah, forgive the sins of all brothers and sisters, all Muslims, all Muslim brothers and sisters, then he will get the reward of all the Muslim brothers and sisters. So, roughly there is almost 2 billion Muslims. So he will get the reward of 2 billion rewards he will get when you make dua. Allahumma gfir li kafatil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat. Oh Allah, you forgive the sins of all Muslim brothers and sisters. A person will get the reward equal to the number of brothers and Muslim, brother, Muslim brothers and sisters. That's the significance of dua for our brothers and sisters. And more important is that when we supplicate for our brothers and sisters, this, uh, this takes away the hatred, specifically in their absence. When we make dua for them, because it's quite obvious that a person is sincere over here because nobody is observing, nobody is watching. He's not, make, he's not making any show off. So he's doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So dua of our brothers and sisters. Specifically in the time of need. So it is much appreciated. And a person deserves a tremendous reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, sixth one. You should be loyal and truthful to your brother and sister. Loyalty signifies constantly loving him till his death and continuing afterwards the same love with his family. The Prophet ﷺ treated an old woman kindly and pointed out she used to visit us during Khadija Khadija's life. In fact, good commitment is a part of Iman, is a part of faith. And Loyalty also entails maintaining modesty, whatever rank you may achieve. You should not also tacitly approve of his negligence of some religious duties. This is uh, the sixth right. That is al-wafa uh, wal-ikhlas. To be loyal and sincere to our friends. Wa ma'an al-wafa, the meaning of loyalty is al-thabat, 
على الحب إلى الموت. Continue our love for our friend until his or her death. Her death. And after death, being kind and compassionate towards the family of our friend. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cited. Uh, he used to respect an old lady, and the Prophet would say, "In her kanat tagashana fi ayyami Khadija." She would visit us during the time, lifetime of Sayyidah Khadija al Kubra or radiyallahu taala anha. Then Prophet says, "Wa inna husn al ahdi min al iman." This commitment that she used to come during the lifetime of Khadija, she was friend of Khadija radiyallahu anha. But after the death and demise of Sayyidah Khadija radiyallahu anha, she kept on visiting the home. That's what Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam remarked. He took no note of it, and he said, "By nahush nal ahdi min al iman." That this this uh, beautiful commitment for one's love to his brother or sister is of the iman. And wa min al wafa al ayta qiyra ala akhi fi tabadu. When irtafa shano, whatever be the position of a person, however. Skillful, knowledgeable, wealthy a person happen to be, then he sh it should not make a person to to stay away from tower from humbleness for the friend. Rather, there should not be a a barrier between the friend between the two friends because sometimes a person's skill, a person's uh, adeptness, a person's capability. Both in terms of intellectual or in terms of financial or material things, it may it may have it it may pose to be a, a barrier between the two, but the true friendship is the one which is above all such things, where these things hardly are counted. What is counted? The sincere relationship, the true relationship. When irta fashanu, however, the position of other friend is higher. What does that will lead to? Now, his sphere of influence is now quite extended. Wa azuma jahu hu, however prestigious that person happens to be, but all these things should not be a barrier in the relationship of the true friendship. Mahmud Ghaznavi, rahimahullah taala, was one of the pious rulers of of in in the Muslim history. Mahmud Ghaznavi. He was, he was from Afghanistan. Ghazni is a place there. That's why he was known as Mahmud Ghaznavi. He had a slave whose name was Ayaz. Both were friends, true friends. One is slave, other is king. Two opposite poles. But this, this, the difference between the two did not become a barrier, and they were always together. And even. Uh, Mahmud Ghaznavi rahimahullah taala he would pay more attention towards the advice given by Ayaz than his own what you call the professional advisers because he was knowing that Ayaz uh, th there is selflessness on his part knowing the position of the king he never asked it for any any benefit but king also knew this but he used to take care of him As far as this friendship is concerned, so all these worldly barriers they vanish into thin air when it comes to the true and sincere friendship. That's why we, what we define as al wafa wal ikhlas, loyalty and sincerity. We can say this is the what you call the essence of true friendship. If there is no loyalty, if there is no ikhlas, then it is all. A selfish friendship. The friendship is based on some selfish interests. And, uh, however, uh, this loyalty doesn't mean that we should always support whatever our friend is doing. No, our loyalty must be subservient to the loyalty of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, whenever we see that our friend is doing anything against the Deen, he practices anything against the Deen. Then we must uh, we must try to fix that problem. We must warn him against it that maybe he's because of his ignorance of Deen or someone has misled him. So it's our responsibility to bring them back to the right path.
to the right track. It's mentioned about Imam Ash-Shafi, Ta'ala. Ash-Shafi'i, known for his knowledge, known for his scholarship, known for his taqwa, and his position is established in the Ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have tremendous mercy upon all our Imam, all our Aimma, all our Ulama. So he was the friend of Muhammad ibn Abdul Hakam. He was also a great scholar. And he defended the Mazhab Shafi'i a lot. And Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah, he was very close to him, Muhammad ibn Abdul, Abdul Hakam. And he was very close to him. When Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he was having his last moments in dunya. His students asked him, Ila man najlis ba'dak ya Abu Abdullah. Abu Abdullah, it was epithet or the kunya of Sayyiduna, Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala. His students asked him, Ila man najlis ba'dak ya Abu Abdullah. You see, the, how much the students were concerned about the proper teacher, the proper companionship. Sahaba is very important. We must be surrounded by the good people. So, Ila man najlis ba'dak ya Abu Abdullah. O Abu Abdullah, whose sessions we seek after you? First, the Sharaf Allah Muhammad ibn Abdul Hakam. Wa huwa in the ra'asihi li yu'mihi ilayhi. Muhammad ibn Abdul Hakam, who was a true friend of, a good friend of Imam al-Shafi rahimahullah, and he defended al-Mazhab al-Shafi a lot. He was very close he was by the head of by the head side of Sayyiduna Imam Shafi ta'ala and he thought that now Imam Shafi will talk about me he will tell his students that you should seek the sessions you must sit with uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Hakam Fakal, but Imam Shafi he said Ila Abi Yaqub al Buwaiti Abu Yaqub al Buwaiti rahimahullah ta'ala was another scholar though there were many differences of opinion between Imam Shafi rahimahullah and Abu Yaqub al Buwaiti. There was difference of opinion in, in many matters of knowledge. But Muhammad ibn Abdul Hakam, there was no difference of opinion. Rather, he used to defend Imam Shafi rahimahullah at many places. But Imam, Imam Shafi rahimahullah, when he mentioned the name of Abu Yaqub al Buwaiti, Muhammad. Then he felt too much disappointed. Muhammad ibn Abdul Hakam. And why Imam Ash-Shafi mentioned Abu Yaqub al Buwaiti? The reason is that he said that he is having more taqwa, more zuhad, and more piousness. He is more pious than other people, he is more zahid. Only knowledge is not counted. I always just stress upon this point that data, knowledge is a data. It brings the fruits only when it is practiced with the sincerity. So Zuhad has to be practiced. So he was Moza Kana Akrabu ila Zuhad wal Warai. He was very close to the Zuhad, asceticism and piousness. So Imam Ash-Shafi Rahimullah gave a true nasiha because he, he was supposed to take care of the future of his students in terms of dunya, in terms of akhirah. So Imam Ash-Shafi Rahimullah Ta'ala and it is also mentioned that Muhammad ibn, -Hakam, ibn Abdul Hakam Rahimullah Ta'ala he, he felt so much offended then he left Al-Mazhab Ash-Shafi and then he became uh, a Maliki scholar because uh, this is uh, we can see the lack of understanding on the part of Muhammad ibn Abdul Hakam rahimahullah ta'ala and this can also be we can also say that it was much about the expectations and then uh, the seventh thing is uh, that you should give up what is called mannerism formalism not to be too formal for our friends and for our brothers and sisters and lead a responsible life. In what way you should not overburden him at all. Your loving him should be for Allah alone. Being blessed by his supplications, seeking support in religion, 
we should avoid dealing with him in excessive modesty in order not to drive him to faint demureness we should deal with your friend as if you were alone as highlighted by jafar ibn muhammad a wise man said mannerism curtails intimacy one is idha ja'at al ulfa rufi'at al ulfa when there is true love there is no formalism the one should not practice as formal uh, as other people are practicing so one should be quite modest and quite open and as simple as possible so the simplicity is the hallmark of hallmark of the true friendship so this is the seventh thing which uh, uh, which is the seventh and the last thing then there are complementary manners inshallah we we'll discuss them uh, in some other session subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanakallah wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik subhan rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh